Hey everyone, welcome to Reef Tropical. It's a brand new channel centered around a custom build of my new Reefer 350, a 91 gallon total system aquarium with sump below. In this initial episode, I'm gonna cover why I chose this tank, give a quick overview of the assembly, show you where I chose to place it and why, discuss the equipment list so far, and lastly, I'm gonna go over my plans for customizing the tank and modifying the plumbing. As a new channel, I would really appreciate it if you would consider subscribing. I plan to release a lot of new videos in the future and show my progress roughly every two weeks. So let's dive on in. As mentioned in the opening, I chose the Red Sea Reefer 350 with a version three sump. These have been around for a few years now and they come out with modifications every so often. If you aren't familiar, these are considered some of the top quality tanks you can get for the money. They feature a rimless glass display with a sump below holding 91 gallons total. I owned a Reefer 170 in the past, absolutely loved it, but had to shut it down unfortunately when we moved the family under one roof during the coronavirus lockdowns. Now, with a new place and room for a larger tank, I began ordering all the equipment needed from my favorite sites, Bulk Reef Supply, SaltwaterAquarium.com, and Marine Depot. Assembly was relatively easy and similar to IKEA, um, but the instructions aren't quite as detailed as an IKEA build. So if this is your first time setting up a reefer, let me give you some tips. First, assemble the entire cabinet in the area you intend to place the tank. Moving after assembly is just one more step where something could go wrong, such as knocking a wall, dropping it, or ultimately damaging one of the cabinets. Speaking of cabinets, the doors can be very tricky to align, but using the screws on the interior hinges allows you to make tweaks as needed. Here's a quick diagram to help out. Um, this has been shared by a few reefers online and I think eight on Reef to Reef is the original creator. Once the cabinet's built, it's time to place the tank on top. You wanna to make sure that the entire system is level. You don't want any water you know, going against one of the panels and potentially knocking it out in the future. Not that that would happen to a Red Sea Aquarium, they're pretty sturdy, but you just never know. So you may wanna shim any areas that need adjustment. Last step is to add the sump and add the plumbing. But again, I'm gonna cover all of this in a future video, kind of going into detail how I plan to plumb this tank and add the Clarisy 5000 um, to really make my water quality you know, crystal clear and remove a lot of the organic compounds. That being said, with the custom plumb, I do wanna give you a quick overview. So let me talk you through exactly kind of what I have planned. All right, so let me walk you through kind of what we have so far. Um, basically, the first thing I did was move the return line over to the left. Usually it goes over here in this little hole. Um, so I moved over the holder, re-drilled it in, and then reconnected it to the return pump. Um, and then the other big thing that I've been working on is the drain line. Um, and I'll go over this in a, in a future video on how to custom plumb all this. It's yet to be glued, which is why you see the blue tape. But basically it comes down into this union and then it flows down into the gate valve and it goes down into the Clara C. And I used one inch PVC Schedule 80 for all of it. You really only need Schedule 40 because Schedule 80 is a little overkill, but that's what was available online. So I went with that. Um, and I think it's gonna work. I guess, you know, we'll wait and see once everything's fully glued and we have water flowing through it. But for the most part, this should hopefully kind of give you an idea of how I did it. Um, until the future video is released. And down below to raise the Red Sea, or sorry, <laughs> raise the Clara Sea a little bit, um, I cut sections of black one inch PVC and just slid it in down below to create a little buffer or a little shelf. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a rough idea of what I have planned. As for equipment, um, here's a quick overview of that as well but it'll also be covered in future videos as we go. So aside from the cabinet lights, which you just saw, which was a necessary installation, um, this is the first round of major equipment that I got with some freebies. Um, starting with the Vectra S2 for the return pump, the Vortec MP40 for the wave maker, um, and then coming over to the Clara C, which I just talked about as far as plumbing. Um, this I'm really excited about because I did not have one on my previous tanks and I'm really excited to see how it performs. Um, using Kessel A360s for lighting, using a Neptune Apex for my controller, and I actually ended up picking up a Trident to manage all of my water parameters, and in 
order to use the trident properly, um, I did end up, you know, picking up the Neptune dose, um, which I'll show you here in one second. Yep, down here at the bottom. So that's pretty much it um, for the initial go. I have plans to add a lot more down the road, um, but these are the big, you know, first purchases that I made. Oh, and I'll be running uh, Coral Pro Salt for the uh, for the initial build. And lastly, real quick, I wanted to touch on tank placement. Um, I do plan to do a future video on my whole thought process behind where I decided to put it, but originally I wanted to put it on the second floor. After looking at where my joists were and talking to a few structural engineers as well as looking online, um, you know, it's really not recommended that anything over 150 goes on the second floor, 150 gallons, and it's a little iffy with anything over 100 gallons. Being that mine is 91 gallons plus heavy glass, rock, everything else, as well as um, you know having an ATO reservoir and doing water changes and having people come around and look at the tank, I just decided the first floor would probably be the best spot for it. It also gave me room to add a little Besta storage cabinet from IKEA for all of the equipment. Um, I'll do another video in the future on how I'm going to mount it all, but it's all going to be going in here. And what's cool is it has kind of an opaque, transparent front that's made out of glass. So I plan to also utilize some of those color lights to make it look just really cool, especially for videos. And that's essentially it for the first update and intro video. I can't wait to fill the tank and hopefully this has given you some ideas for your own tank. Um, as for fish, I would love some suggestions for those as well. Uh, if you could leave them in the comments below, definitely looking forward to all of your suggestions. And additionally, I would really appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing and following along. I'm looking to be a part of the community and your support is very much appreciated. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next video.